one gave me a few ideas what I could do. Okay. So, all right. So at the top, you want to put what age group it's for, and then you can put the title of your lesson. Pick any date, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's part of a bigger series. Maybe you're doing a, a unit on Bible characters. And then for this particular one, you're going to do Moses. Okay, so you can think of what, what would this be a part of? Do I just do random teaching, or would this be part of a sequence of lessons that I'm going to do? All right, maybe, maybe your unit title is the fruit of the Spirit, and you're doing one each week, okay? So what is the, the purpose of the whole unit, and then what is the lesson passage that you're going to, what's your scripture passage? What is the central idea in this passage? Now then, very importantly, is the next part. What would I like my student to know, feel, and do? All right, number one, I would want them to know the facts of the story that I'm telling them. Want them to feel the need uh, for, whether it be for conviction, feel, feel the need for salvation, feel the need to witness. It can be whatever you want them to feel from the, from the facts they've received. And then lastly, what do you actually want them to do? Do you want them to go out and tell three people about Jesus? Do you want them to get baptized? What do you want them to do as a result? So I always find when I, when I write that out, it really helps me into what they should know, feel, and do. And then what am I going to do in a large group, all of them together, or individually or a small group. If I have 10 people in my class, what am I going to do in, with the whole group? And then am I going to break that down to individual things they do or small group things they do? Now what will be very helpful if on the back, if you would take, let's gauge this lesson you're going to do for 45 minutes, okay? So first five minutes is going to be what? The next 10 minutes? next five minutes, however you want to break it down. But I, I find it helps for people who are just beginning to teach to have a time frame. How much time am I going to spend on each thing? Now, sometimes people say, I'm going to teach three-year-olds and I'm going to spend 15 minutes telling the story. That won't work, okay? Remember that it's usually one minute of attention per year of age. So if they're three, you're looking at three minutes of attention span. Now that doesn't mean that your story can only be three minutes, but it means you've got to be very active and changing and up and down and all around. You can't just sit there and for 10 minutes tell three-year-olds a story just sitting there talking to them. Okay? It's got to have action and, and they've got to be involved. All right, so keep that in mind when you're planning. I've even been uh, learned this summer that usually for young adults, uh, 15 minutes is max attention span before they need something different. I was in a, a group of seminars, and they, I kept wondering, why do they have so many different teachers in one hour? But it was because they had learned that 15 minutes, and then they got to have a change. All right? Why is that? I don't know, but I know technology and TV hasn't helped it. All right, but anyway, that's the way it is. So take this, and I want you to write out a lesson plan that you can send in to me. If you could send it before the class, then I can have a look at it and see uh, how it is. And if it needs tweaking, we can talk about it together. All right, and then on the back, write a time frame for a 45-minute lesson. Okay, now in your packet of materials, I've given you... Uh, quite a few ideas. You have this here that says 24 ways uh, to teach a Sunday school lesson. So you might look at that. Also, I think you have the five senses in the creation story and giving you different ways to use the five senses if you're teaching the creation story. So you can't take papers I've handed you and do one of those. Pick a different story. But uh, use those to get some ideas. All right, any questions about that? I just have a problem. What's your problem? Because next month, 
next month on the Saturday, the last Saturday of the month, it's our, it's our church anniversary. Oh, right. Oh, right. So we'll be here in the afternoon. Right. We'll just be in the morning. Oh, okay. What time, what time will you have to stop? Um, because starts, our service starts at 4 o'clock. Oh, right. So it's going to be able to get the... Do you be able to get one afternoon class, or will you have to stop at lunchtime? At probably lunchtime. Okay. Well, we'll keep that in mind, but go ahead and send in to me your lesson yeah, I'll plan. Send it to you. Okay. Okay. Try to do that, and I'll try to remember to let the other teachers know. Hopefully, Zion can be on, and Elena can be here. All right. Now let's look at one more thing uh, here. Uh, the ideal Pentecostal teacher. Okay. All right, how about you read one and I'll read one. The ideal Pentecostal teacher is one that's trained in the scriptures and for the Lord's service. 2 Timothy 2.15, the Pentecostal teacher must be willing to be taught from God's word. His guidebook is the Bible. The indwelling spirit of God is his personal guide. In order to teach it well, he must know it well. Be a constant learner. You cease to be a teacher when you cease to be a learner. All right. Example. In every good work, 1 Timothy 4.12, we remember the old saying, we teach only a little by what we say, much more by what we do, but most of all by what we are. Then be sure you practice what you teach. Be an example outside of the classroom as well as in it. Children, especially, are imitators, so be a good example for them to follow. Abounding in love, Ephesians 3.17. We must love the Lord our God with all our heart, allowing his love to flow through our being to reach our classes. We must love our classes. No one dare engage in this high calling of teaching unless he has learned to love Christ and then to love the members of the class. Let your class know that you are vitally interested in each of them personally. Consecrated to his service. Romans 6, 11. As a teacher, we must have first been partaker of the truth we teach. We must have a vital relationship to the Lord before we can introduce him to others. A teacher must be a de dedicated person. Helpful at all times. Are we lying back in the harness or are we helping to pull the load? Not only must we be helpful to those in our classes, but we must be willing to help our fellow teachers, superintendent, pastor, missionaries, etc. There must be complete cooperation with the entire Sunday school and church program, visitation, drives, etc. Enthusiastic. Acts 13.25. To be enthusiastic is to be fervent in the spirit. Enthusiasm is contagious. Enjoy your teaching. Don't make the class session dull and boring. Have a happy, Christ-like spirit. Make your Lord real to the class. And then responsible. Romans 14, 12. The responsibility of the teacher should be to win the entire class to Christ and to train them for Christian service. What kind of teacher are you? It has been said that there are three kinds of teachers. One so bad that we remember them with sadness. Two so good that they shared a blessing we haven't forgotten. And three mediocre, can't remember anything about them. Dear Lord, please help me to be an ideal teacher. And the more effort you put into teaching, the more of an impact and the more uh, lasting results you can see in students. Don't ever try to just slide by or just think, ah, oh, well, I've just got one or two kids. You know, put everything into it, no matter how many or how few you may have. And that, that's very, very important. And God sees your effort and will honor you. You may not feel like you're qualified or you're creative or know enough about the Bible or whatever, but you give it your very best shot, and the Lord will be there to help you. And even before you do this assignment of this lesson plan, it would be very good if you would pray. Sometimes what we do in life is we make all our plans and then say, God bless it. But I found out when it comes to my teaching, I pray before I make any plans, and I say, God, would you help me to make the right plans and then I know it will be blessed. So if it's his plans, it will be blessed. All right, so put everything you have into it. 
So for next month then, we're to have this three to four minute story. Now if you want to take the story that you're going to use for your lesson plan, that's fine. You can do that. But do the lesson plan in writing and put in there as using as many of the senses as you can. And uh, then be w ready to share a story. Now what I'll have to do is maybe see yours either before or after. Maybe I can see it the day before if you could connect with me. Uh, I, could, I could try to do that. Okay? All right, very good. You have a few minutes left. You might want to just take and look over this one that says the 24 ways to teach, and that will give you some more ideas on how to plan a lesson. All right? Let's pray together, and then I'll leave you with that. Lord, thank you for the privilege of teaching. Thank you, Lord, that you help us to train us and teach us to be creative. Pray that you would be with Samantha and the others who view this class, that they would be blessed and guided by your Spirit as they prepare lessons to teach. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right. Thank you very much.